Hello guys, Anatoly here. Welcome to the Financial YouTube channel where we talk everything Agile, Agile tools. Today, as usual, we're going to talk about Jira. And the question I'm going to ask a lot, how do you track your team performance? In Jira, there's a lot of ways to track the work, but how do you at the bird's view, let's say your project manager or some executive on stakeholder, how can you go and track how your team is doing and analyze that? I'm going to show you how to do it in Scrum Framework in this video and in a future videos I'm going to show you how to do it in Kanban and other frameworks. I'm going to show you how I usually do that. And I'm going to show you an example of one of our clients. So I'm going to hide some of the information because I just want to show you the graphs themselves and what's happening, but I'm not going to show you the exact information. It's all under NDA. So let's go. Before we do that, I want to tell you three things. If you guys want to learn Jira very fast, I have a cool course, um, it's about eight hours, it's very affordable, you go for the course and you learn stuff like grouping, workflow of permissions, all those kind of things. Link in the description, please check it out. If you guys are stuck and you need help with Agile, you need help with Jira, we can do it hourly basis. So if you wanna book me or somebody in my team for an hour to talk through all the things, you can go on the first link in the comments for this video, click on the Calendly, book yourself into our calendar. Finally, if you're a big organization, you need Agile transformation, you need somebody to help you with Jira or all together, go to defineagile.com, check out our cool packages, and we will be happy to work with you. Now let's get to the meat of this video. So if you are in Jira, you can go to reports, and in your reports, you will see something like a sprint report, assuming you're working in scrums, assuming you're working in sprints. If you want to analyze data, you have to have data. So if you don't see what I see, let's say this burn down chart, which will go through, you might not be tracking your hours. You might not be estimating your stories. So I highly recommend you do that to be, to make sure that you have good data, track the data. So, uh, in this scenario, we are not using story points. We are using hours. So this burn down chart, this is how we're burning for the sprint. This is one of the sprints. We see that the team committed to uh, 325 hours. Then something happened and they increased it to 520 hours, which you should not usually do. But this is why graph like that allows you to see everything in a bird's view. And this is a quick intro how to read the graph. So the graph is we come in with certain hours and then this is days, 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 and then we should get to a zero because we should complete everything. Or if we don't complete everything, at least we should be trailing on the line because this line is slowly going down. So even if we don't complete everything, it's still a good idea to always touch the line, every day touch the line, meaning we're completing things gradually. We don't complete everything at once. So the other line that is not often used, but used in this case is time spent. So we're also tracking if the team is, uh, I guess, putting their time in and how they're spending their time. So we see they're correlated inversely, which is a good, which means that they do track time when they complete the work. But the work we see is not completed in, in a gradual basis. So we see, again, look at this chart, they committed to something, then they just increased it. So they just added the probably forgot to add a bunch of stories to a sprint. They added them later. And then they're working and they're adding more, completing, adding more, completing a little bit. So it doesn't touch, um, doesn't touch the line and it just goes very gradually until it just drops a little bit. So we see that they did not complete all of it. They completed a little part of it. They tracked some time, but we already see there's a problem. So when in Scrum, process, scrum ceremonies, would you surface that? You would do it in sprint review. After every sprint is done, when we click sprint complete, I like to do it with the team. Sit down with the team, click on sprint complete button, and then let's look at sprint report because it is auto-generated. This meeting sometimes takes a day, sometimes take an hour. It depends how mature your teams are. So here, the good things about it, there's a status report. So when people say, ah, Natoli, what are you saying? I'm not sure if this is correct, but this, might, this graph might be wrong. And you say, okay, let's go for completed issues. So everything with a star means we added something to a sprint. 
So then we go with a summary, you don't see it, but summary shows you what it's all about. So we can say, let's say ATM203 is a login page, a header. We can say, why did, not, why did we add this login page header to a sprint? Who did it come from? What did we remove? Then we go for all of them. Then we can see, we changed original estimate from three weeks to four. Why did that happen? Why we did not estimate this thing that we put in a sprint later on? Because everything with a star means put in a sprint later on. Then once you go through this, you say, okay, we didn't complete those issues. Why did we not complete them? Let's go one by one. So we go and then we discuss, we put some comments in. There's a lot of issues here, it's a huge team. Um, we complete something outside of the sprint. Why did we complete something outside of the sprint? Why was it so important? We removed lots of things from a sprint. I mean, most of them are with a star, which is good. So which means that they were put in and then they were removed. But why did we put them in and why did we remove them? And then we discuss all of this and then we make some rules. Let's not do that in future. Let's not remove things in the middle. Let's not put a lot of things in the middle. Maybe we're estimating for too much. Maybe we said that we we're gonna complete, I don't know, three weeks plus five weeks and seven weeks, like 13 weeks or, uh, 530, uh, 520 hours, maybe it's too much. Maybe if we just stayed with 325, we'd complete it all because we completed a bunch, but we just added stuff in the middle. Why are we doing that? And the good thing is you can do that as the sprint goes as well. So if sprint just started, this graph will update every day. So every day you can go and check it out. Or if you want, you can do it in your standups. You go to your standup and talk to your team. Like, okay, guys, we didn't complete anything today. It was like three days left. We didn't complete anything today. Why didn't we complete anything? What's our blockers? Let's talk about it. Guys, we are not moving uh, well enough. I think we're committed to something we can't complete. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. It's all about discussion. It's all about surfacing issues earlier. The biggest problem I see with the teams that everybody's silent, nobody's surfacing issues, and that's why things are not getting done. You might think that things are not, not getting done because teams are immature. That happens sometimes. But if even in mature teams, if they surface issues early on and somebody can take action on it, we can complete a lot. We can be very, very productive. This is Sprint Report I use. I hope it is helpful. If you want to share your Sprint Reports with me, let's book a call and I can walk you through and I can give you some tips why your teams are not performing well enough. If you see that you, there is a complete wreck and things are happening like crazy, you probably should hire us. We're going to come in, we're going to set up the process, and we're going to help you out. But in any way, I hope it brings you value. If it does, and it, just one thing I ask, please subscribe and like because we need to bring this to more and more people. People who are running these teams need to be more educated and they need to do it in the right way. This is one of those ways. Thank you for watching. Talk to you next one. Bye-bye.